Hey everyone, Dennis Ernst here. What's one of the biggest problems in drawing blood from an IV device? Yep, hemolysis. See that sample? The lab can't test that. It's got to be rejected and redrawn by venipuncture. No phlebotomist or nurse has time for that, and no patient or their physician wants lab results to be delayed by a redraw. In this video, I'm going to tell you how you can prevent hemolyzing blood samples when you draw blood from a line. If you're a phlebotomist who doesn't currently draw from a line, stick around. You may not now, but later on in this video, I'll explain why I think you will be soon. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel right here in the corner and click on the notifications icon when you get to our homepage. First, where in the hospital are samples hemolyzed more than anywhere else? Well, the emergency department, right? Look at this. One study found samples drawn by laboratory phlebotomists are hemolyzed 1.6% of the time, but when drawn by emergency department personnel, it's over 12%. Other studies say it's 25%. A 25% failure rate might be acceptable in some industries, but not healthcare. Why is it so high? Because so many patients in the emergency department get IV needles put into their arms, and before the nurse starts the fluids, they draw off the blood samples and send them to the lab. Why is that problematic? Well, think about it. IVs are designed primarily to infuse fluids, right? Not withdraw blood. Some are more red cell friendly than others, but if they were all designed to draw blood, well, we wouldn't be seeing such high hemolysis rates, would we? Yet we do. We have to remember red blood cells are like fragile crystal orbs. And if we don't draw blood samples with a device designed for it, well, it's going to likely be hemolyzed. So the first thing you can do to prevent hemolysis from a line draw is don't draw from a line. Unless you're using technology designed for it, do a venipuncture instead. Hey, if 25% of your line draws get rejected by the lab, why subject that many patients and their physicians to the delays in getting actionable results? You either implement the technology or you limit line draws. The second strategy is if you must draw from a line, limit it to large gauge cannulas. Look at these statistics. The larger the gauge number, the smaller the diameter, right? So if you draw only through large diameter IV sets, 14s and 16s, you're not likely to end up with a hemolyzed sample. Well, as long as you do everything else right. But draw from 18 gauge and 20 gauge IV lines and your rate of hemolysis is three to five times that of a routine venipuncture, which is about 3%. 22 gauge or larger virtually guarantees hemolysis. So if you limit draws to 14 and 16 gauge cannulas, you'll probably be okay. The problem is though, most IVs are 18 or 20 gauge, so you need the right technology. Also, if you must do a line draw without devices designed for the purpose, use a tube holder and draw directly into the tube instead of a syringe. Most people pull way too hard on a syringe. Besides, the vacuum in a tube is limited. And when it comes to those fragile crystal orbs, the less negative pressure, the better. Those three things will eliminate a lot of hemolyzed samples and recollects. But here's the caveat. You can try and see how it works out, but notice how each of these is behavioral. They each are dependent upon the nurse or the phlebotomist making the right decisions. That's not only hard to implement facility-wide and especially system-wide, but it's even harder to maintain over time. And you usually end up with this roller coaster graph where your hemolysis rates rise when people drift back to their old habits and then fall right after every in-service reminder only to drift back up again, up and down, up and down. Or you can implement technology designed specifically for drawing from peripheral lines like this. After the line is flushed, this device attaches to the lure of the IV set and a flexible internal flow tube is advanced through the cannula beyond the catheter tip where hemolysis usually occurs and to a point where the blood flow is more normal. Then the collector simply withdraws the sample as for any other draw. Once the tubes are filled, the device is removed and the line is flushed again. Samples drawn with this device have been found to reduce the frequency of hemolysis by up to 56%. A term you're going to be hearing more and more is one-stick hospitalization. Because for patients who have peripheral IVs, blood samples can be drawn with far greater success and with significantly less hemolysis than without them. Better yet, it's much more comfortable to the patient who doesn't have to be stuck up to five times every day. This particular device is called PIVO from Volano Vascular. 
It's already in use in many facilities, reducing venipunctures from patients with peripheral IV lines, potentially for the duration of their hospital stay. If you're a phlebotomist, I think it's one of the most promising developments of your professional career because this is a device you can be trained to use. That includes flushing the lines. The only time a nurse would need to be involved is to discontinue the fluids and then start them again after the blood has been obtained. Is a flush solution a medication or a device? While the FDA does not consider a saline flush to be a medication, they consider it to be a device. Same for the Joint Commission and the pharmaceutical industry. So teaching a phlebotomist to flush a line with saline is perfectly acceptable, at least in the U.S. A lot of people think phlebotomists can't flush a line and that it's the same as administering a medication, but that's a myth. It is entirely acceptable. Because of that and many other reasons, this technology is well on its way to changing the way blood is drawn. Line draws aren't something we have to avoid anymore and their samples aren't something that are bound to be rejected for hemolysis. So how about that? Suddenly phlebotomists are of much greater value to the nursing profession, to the lab, and to the patient. If you acquire this skill, your stock goes up. And it's about time. As more and more facilities adopt one-stick hospitalization, more and more phlebotomists are going to be trained how to draw from a line. That's good for you and good for the profession. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and remember, keep sticking to the standards. See you next time.